I'm on my way right now to Universal Studios Hollywood. I wanted to make a video talking about the things that have changed there since the 80s and 90s, and kind of just in general, the things that have changed there. Now, I was only ever lucky enough to go to Universal Studios one time in the 1980s. However, I did go there quite a bit in the 90s, so I might talk about more 90s stuff, but we'll definitely be talking about some of the 80s stuff that's missing as well. Now, I don't remember a lot about our visit to Universal Studios in the 80s, but what I do remember is it was a Saturday afternoon, my brother and I were watching TV and a commercial came on saying, come meet the Transformers in person and every kid gets a free Transformers toy. My dad was in the kitchen making lunch. I instantly jumped up and ran in there told him everything I had just heard on the TV and begged him to take us. And he looked down at me and said, sure, that sounds great. Even as a small kid, I stood there in complete shock. I don't know what was going on. Uh, we didn't do things like that. We never really went places like that. So I don't know. I still don't know what happened. I guess I just caught my dad um, at the right time. Probably an hour later, he was really regretting that he said yes. But either way, the next day we went, I know I didn't get a Transformers toy. I remember my parents asking and they told them they were already out of toys. I don't even remember if I met the Transformers. Um, we didn't have a video camera yet. And for some odd reason, my parents just completely failed to bring any type of a camera. The only actual proof that I even have that I was there was a picture that my parents paid for of me sitting on a bike with E.T. Uh, for the most part, that's all I remember. There are a few other things, and I'll talk about them as we go through the park. Um, it's actually going to be getting dark here pretty soon because of the time change. So as soon as we get there, we'll quickly do the tram tour, and then we'll take a quick walk around the park and talk about some other things. So I just got into the park. We're about to get onto the tram. I stopped for a minute to take a look at this view of the back lot which we're about to head down to. So on the TVs right now, while you're waiting in line to get onto the tram, they're actually playing video of one of the few things that I remember from the tram tour from when I came here as a kid in the 80s, and that's the Battle of Galactica. So basically, Battle of Galactica was a mix of animatronics and live actors. The tram would get stopped by a Cylon that was sitting in a vehicle. In front of you was a large ship, and the Cylon would force the tram to drive onto the ship. After the Cylons capture the tram, a colonial warrior busts onto the ship. There's a laser battle and the tram is saved and drives off to safety. So you'll be able to see right now as we leave the tram station right up here on the left, this is actually where the Battle of Galactica used to be. But I think it was somewhere around 1992, they got rid of it to make the footing for Back to the Future. It's great to see that the old school Universal City sign is still here. I just wish that it was still more visible from the freeway. I definitely remember driving down the freeway with my dad and staring up at that Universal City sign and wishing that we were at Universal Studios. Another thing that was in this area was the Burning House, and it was part of the tram tour since 1973, and it was just that. It was a burning house. The tram would drive by and the house would always be on fire but never burn down. It was right over here on the right side of the tram, and around 1992, they got rid of it to make way for the Jurassic Park ride and coincidentally enough, the fire station. This giant building is soundstage number 12 and it's currently home to The Voice, but way back in the 80s, this is where they built the interiors for Tony's mansion in Scarface. So that big shootout that you see at the end of the movie, that was filmed right here inside this soundstage. Another memory that I have from coming here as a kid in the 80s was driving somewhere in this area and right out on New York Street they had a car carrier with about five or six kit cars from Knight Rider and as we drove by I stood up and I screamed hi kit and waved and my parents shushed me and told me to sit down because I was embarrassing them but it's kind of cool to think that those kit cars were probably actual screen used cars because obviously they were out here on the back lot because they were filming Knight Rider. So we're now heading into Courthouse Square, and I'm sure most of you know that this is where they film Back to the Future, but we'll save that for another video. I'm sure most of you also know that parts of Gremlins was also filmed here. So this is pretty cool. I've been in Courthouse Square hundreds and hundreds of times. I've seen it dressed for a few different TV shows. I've seen it dressed for Ghost Whisperer and Parenthood, but I've never seen it decked out like this. I mean. This whole area is completely decked out. They even have a log cabin built over here. This is where the cafe would have been in Back to the Future. 
And this is all done for a show called Rutherford Falls, which I've actually never heard of until today. So it's probably worth mentioning that most of the buildings that you see out here on the back lot are not the original buildings from the 70s and 80s and 90s. Back in 2008, there was a major fire that wiped out pretty much all of the back lot, including the original King Kong ride. I think the only building that survived was the clock tower from Back to the Future. Speaking of King Kong, we're about to head into Kong 3D. And as we move into the building, notice right here on my left, this is the old collapsing bridge. And if you're not familiar with this, it's been here since about the mid 70s. And it was a bridge that the tram would drive across. And when you would get halfway across it, it would drop and feel like it was going to collapse. As time went on, they started using it less and less. And then eventually they just stopped using it altogether. And since they've built Kong 3D, they can't use it at all. So for those of you that haven't been inside Kong 3D, this is what it looks like. Basically 3D screens all around the tram. And I mean, it's cool. It's a really cool attraction, but it's definitely not the same as the original King Kong. Like there's just no substitute for real life sets and a giant animatronic gorilla. I can still smell that banana scent that they used to pump in as you drove past King Kong. I gotta tell you, I really missed the original King Kong ride. I definitely took it for granted. So I just noticed as we're driving away from Kong, that train sitting on the collapsing bridge. Now that train has always been on Western Street and back in the day when the tram would drive down the road, that train would come rushing towards the tram and then stop just before hitting it. At one point, they even had a Mr. T dummy driving the train. Now the train hasn't worked since I don't know when, but it's still always been out there on Western Street and it's just kind of interesting to see it sitting on the collapsing bridge. I guess maybe now they're just going to start storing everything over here that they no longer use. Over here they have some of the Universal Picture Cars on display, starting with Kit from Knight Rider. Of course, this is not the kit that we're all familiar with. This is from the newer TV series. Next to that is the Ferrari from Magnum PI, and then Biff's Ford Convertible, along with some of the other vehicles from Back to the Future Part 2. They used to have the Back to the Future DeLorean out here, and then they moved it into a museum on the lower lot, and once that closed, I have no idea where it is now. These are some of the original Jurassic Park props and vehicles. They've even got a couple of animatronic dinosaurs that pop up and spit water at you. I mean, it's a cool little area. Now they have had this area done up like this for a while. Now when you enter this area, they used to have a Jurassic Park sign that I noticed is now gone. So I kind of wonder how much longer this stuff is gonna be out here. Now here's something that's been part of the tram tour since 1968 and still going strong. Of course, this is the flash flood. Now, a few things have changed on it over the years, but for the most part, it stayed the same. For me, the most exciting part of this area has always been that they supposedly filmed part of Three Amigos right here. Now, this area has changed a lot. The tram used to make a left, and then we'd go around this lake that you see right here, and then over on the other side is where you would go through the parting of the seas, but they've just completely gotten rid of that. That's not part of the tram tour anymore. And then back over here behind us used to be the water tank that was used in the movie Dragnet. Not sure if it's still there or not. And then back there to the right used to be the Lion Estate signs from Back to the Future, but those were destroyed years ago. Driving through this area just reminded me of something else that Universal no longer does. They used to have sections where the tram would stop and then people would come out and do little skits. Right here, a monster would come out and do a skit. And then over in the western area, a couple of cowboys would come out and have a gunfight. But yeah, they don't do that anymore. We're now moving into the earthquake ride. And of course, this is cool because it's been here since the 80s, but nothing's really changed here on this ride. I mostly just get excited about it because it was used in Beverly Hills Cop Part 3. Coming up on the left side right here, this is where that train used to sit that I was talking about earlier. And it looks like this whole section is under construction now. That would explain why the train is now sitting on the bridge. I wonder what they're getting ready to do out here. We're coming up on Jaws, which has been part of the studio tour since the mid 70s. That shark that's hanging out there, I believe that's the same shark that used to be on the upper lot 
hanging right next to Doc Brown's chicken. Jaws is another one that over the years has had minor changes, but for the most part, the attraction has remained the same. We're passing by the chicken ranch, which has changed a lot over the years. They tore out the entire back half and built some other sets for TV shows. It's definitely not the same as it used to be. And of course, it figures we're not going down this street today, but that's Wisteria Lane where they filmed the TV show Desperate Housewives. Before that, it was Colonial Street where lots of different movies and TV shows were filmed. But most importantly for me, that's where they filmed The Burbs. We're coming up on the area where they used to have Whoville, but they recently got rid of Whoville and replaced it with more picture cars. Now for me, the most exciting one was right here. That was Mr. Bean's car. And then right next to that, that ice cream truck. Now that was featured on my old band's album cover. Besides that, I noticed a couple of cars from the Fast and the Furious, but nothing else too exciting. Maybe I missed some stuff. Just beyond that, the Bates Motel. This wasn't used in the original Psycho, but I believe it was built for Psycho 2. But the Psycho House is the original one. However, it's been relocated around the back lot and added on to multiple times. In the 80s, it was relocated and used for the Chevy Chase movie, Modern Problems. Just beyond the Psycho House, this is the War of the Worlds set. And although this is not a vintage part of Universal Studios, this is probably one of the coolest sets that they have out here today. This area was also featured on my old band's album cover. It was really cool to walk around out here and take pictures and just explore. Well, I just discovered some extremely heartbreaking news. This is where the Great Outdoors cabin used to be, and it appears that Universal got rid of it. And I am completely devastated to see it gone. For many years, driving by the Great Outdoors cabin was my favorite part of the studio tour. I mean, Universal has gotten rid of some cool stuff over the years, but this one just takes the cake. Years ago, I was lucky enough to get to go inside the Great Outdoors cabin, and it was so absolutely cool. I didn't take any video, but I took a few pictures, and it was really strange, even though it wasn't dressed, it looked just like it did in the movie. Like I could just look around and picture everything. I can't believe it's gone. I was so distraught from the Great Outdoors cabin being gone that I forgot to film the end of the tram tour, but it used to be the rotating tunnel. It was a tunnel that you would drive into and it would rotate and make it look like the tram was going upside down. Originally in the 70s, it was the Glacier Avalanche. It later became Dante's Peak and then later got rethemed as the Mummy's Tomb before eventually becoming the Fast and Furious experience. As we pull into the tram drop-off area, we see the backside of the Harry Potter ride, but I remember when this was the backside of the Universal Amphitheater or the Gibson Amphitheater. I can remember always passing by here and seeing roadies loading equipment in through the stage doors. So we're back inside the park, and this area right here has probably changed the most over the years. Right here where Harry Potter World now is, this used to be the Universal Amphitheater, which later became the Gibson Amphitheater. Just beside that, from the 60s all the way up through the 90s was the Warlord Tower, which later in 2001 became the Nickelodeon Blast Zone, which was really cool. Sometime around 2008, the Nickelodeon Blast Zone was rethemed with Curious George, which also had a smaller playground behind it for the kids that might be too young for the Curious George Playland. Now we're about to move into Springfield, but before we do, I have to stop and talk about this really quick. Stage 56, which is currently home to the special effects show, which used to be located on the lower lot. Now this area used to be an outdoor theater and it was for the Land of a Thousand Faces makeup show. In 1979, it became the Castle Theater and it was for the Castle Dracula show. In the 80s, it was home to the Adventures of Conan. And after that, it saw numerous shows, including Cinemastique, the Beetlejuice Graveyard Rock and Review, Spider-Man Rocks, the show that was notoriously so bad it was amazing, Fear Factor Live, and The Creature of the Black Lagoon musical, which I'm sad I never got to see, but I'm gonna assume it was probably just as bad as Spider-Man Rocks. Man, I used to love coming to watch Spider-Man Rocks. It was such a terrible show, and I'm sorry, no offense to anybody that was involved in that show, but it was so terrible that it was entertaining. That was the cool thing about it. Now, I'm a huge Simpsons fan, so I love the fact that we have Springfield here at Universal Studios, and I love the fact that we have a Simpsons ride, but I hate the fact that we had to trade the Back to the Future ride in order to get it. 
For those of you that didn't know, the Simpsons ride was originally the Back to the Future ride, and it was awesome. The buildings are still the original Back to the Future buildings, and you can see things that are recognizable from the Back to the Future ride. They just added all of the Simpsons stuff in front of it. And over here in this area used to be Doc Brown's Fried Chicken, and when it was here, this entire area smelled so good. Now, Doc Brown's Fried Chicken actually remained here for quite a while after the Simpsons ride opened. You can actually find pictures of Doc Brown's Chicken, and you can see the Quickie Mart next to it. Also in this area used to be a body of water, which featured the River Princess Boat Restaurant. And then just beside that was a small dock with Kit from Knight Rider sitting on it. And you could go sit inside the car and have a conversation with Kit. And when we came here in the 80s, I do remember staring at Kit from across the water, dreaming of sitting inside and talking to the car. And I remember begging my dad to let me go do it, but he said the line was too long. Oh well. Also in that area is where they had the Hanging Jaws Shark. I remember coming here when my son was about six months old and taking a picture of him sitting inside the mouth of Jaws. And for some reason, everybody around me was freaking out and giving me dirty looks as if it was a real shark and it was gonna eat my baby. Now, when I came here as a kid in the 80s, there was no lower lot. The lower lot didn't exist yet. But of course, all the times that I came here throughout the 90s, there was a lower lot. Now, I don't wanna waste too much time going down that long escalator because the sun is starting to go down, but we'll go down about halfway and I'll show you some of the stuff. So right off the bat, we can see something that's different from the 90s. That large building right there from 1991 till 2003, that was the ET ride. And the ET ride was probably one of my favorite rides right along with the Back to the Future ride and the tram tour. But in 2003, they closed it down and they replaced it with the Revenge of the Mummy roller coaster, which is actually a really good ride. I just wish we didn't have to lose ET to get that ride. Luckily, however, the ET adventure ride does still exist at Universal Studios Orlando. And I'm really happy that I got to take my son on it at least once. Hopefully we'll make it out there again one day so we can ride it once again. Now that building that you see behind the old ET building, that used to be Backdraft, and that was there from 1992 until 2009, at which point it closed to make way for the Transformer ride. Also right next to Backdraft used to be the special effects show, which I already showed you moved up to the Castle Theater. Now just to the left of the Transformers ride, you can see the brand new land that they're currently building, and that's gonna be Super Mario World, which is something that I'm really excited about. However, in order to make Super Mario World, they had to tear down Soundstage 28, which was known as the Phantom Stage. Soundstage 28 is where they filmed Phantom of the Opera, and it was known to be an extremely haunted stage, so much so that a lot of people didn't even want to work in that stage, and it actually still had half of the Phantom of the Opera sets inside because they were afraid to tear them down. Now, sometime in the early 2000s, I was really lucky and I got to go inside that soundstage and take some pictures on the old Phantom of the Opera sets, something that I'm really glad that I got to do before they tore it down. Now, even though I'm really excited about Super Mario World, I'm still really shocked that Universal would tear down Soundstage 28. They had been quoted as saying that it was a historic soundstage and it was one of the first stages built on the lot. Now there's not too much down here on the lower lot. Really the only other thing is all the way over here to the left is the Jurassic Park ride, which is now Jurassic World. I don't know why everyone's over here trying to get a picture of the sun setting on these mountains. The real attraction is over here behind us and it's the Universal Sheraton. And why is the Universal Sheraton so special? Because that's where yours truly went to prom. Yep, that's right right up there through those large windows on the top floor. That's where the banquet room is where I danced the night away at prom. The animal actors stage is another one that's been here since almost the beginning. It opened up in 1970 and it's been called a few different things over the years, but it's always been the animal show. So who remembers when in this area there was a Flintstone themed barbecue restaurant? Now that was the same building that was used for the River Princess Boat Restaurant that we talked about earlier. Now, next to the Flintstone barbecue restaurant, there was also a Flintstone themed carnival game and a few other Flintstone themed items. Now, something in this area that we definitely need to talk about used to be located right here. This is the former location of the Wild West Stunt Show, which was actually here from 1964 until 2002 when they tore it down to create what I believe is now called the Universal Plaza. 
Now, most of the year, nothing really goes on in here. During the holiday times, this is where they have the Who celebration, which is what's going on right now. But like I said, most of the year, this is just wasted space. And I wish they would have just left the Wild West stunt show because it was a good one. And I do definitely remember seeing that when I came here in the 80s. Here's something else that's been here for a really long time. Mel's Diner. However, right here in front of the restaurant, they used to have a statue of a 1950s worker holding a giant cheeseburger. Who knows why they get rid of things like that. Directly in front of us, what's now the Despicable Me ride, that used to be Cyberdyne Industries and the Terminator 2 live action show. It was actually here from 1999 until 2012. And before that, it was the location of an American Tale stage show and Fievel's Playland, which is something that I never got to see, but I definitely used to come to the Terminator 2 stage show a lot. Right over here at what's now Supercelly Funland, this used to be Aquazone and then later Coke Soak, which was kind of wasted space. It was just somewhere to go and kind of cool off. But if we look over here, we see the original Cyberdyne buildings. These are the same buildings from the Terminator 2 show. Now, like I said, the Terminator show closed in 2012, but it did remain open for quite a while after that in Orlando. And again, I was lucky enough to take my son to it at least one time in Florida. Right over there was the exit of the Terminator show where they had a cool little photo spot. And I remember taking a picture with my wife and son there when he was about six months old. Now it's good to see that they still have Doc Brown out here taking pictures with people. That's one thing that I definitely think has changed a lot at Universal. Back in the day, they used to have a lot more characters walking around taking pictures and greeting people. I mean, as you can see, they still have some, but I feel like in the 80s and 90s, there was a lot more. Right here at the corner of this building, which is now a Starbucks, this used to be the location of the Blues Brothers stage show, which was here from 1991 until 2015. Multiple times a day, the theme music would start playing over some loudspeakers, and then the Blues Brothers car would come driving through the theme park, and then the Blues Brothers would jump up on stage and perform multiple musical numbers. So there's a lot to talk about with this area located next to where the Blues Brothers stage was. So the building that used to be here was originally the Victoria Station Restaurant, and then in 1998, it became Marvel Mania, which was a Marvel-themed restaurant that was supposed to be really huge, but for some reason, it was only open for a year, and it closed down in 1999. After that, they used the Marvel Mania building for multiple year-round mazes and haunted houses. The first one was in 2000 when they did the Chicken Run maze, and then in 2001, they did The Mummy Returns. After that was Van Helsing. And then finally, The House of Horrors. Now, for some reason, all of the walkthrough mazes that were here never did too well. There was never a line. I always really enjoyed going to them, probably partially because of my love for Halloween and haunted houses, and then partially because, like I said, there was never a line. You could always just walk right in. I remember I was pretty bummed when they tore down the building because it meant there wouldn't be any more mazes but I was really excited to see what new ride they were gonna build, but then it just ended up being shops and a Starbucks. Now, probably one of my fondest memories from coming here in the 80s happened right down here at the end of this path, and it was the A-Team Stunt Show, and it was awesome. Now, unfortunately, you can't find a lot of information about the A-Team Stunt Show online, but I definitely remember seeing it, and one thing that I really remember is as you were leaving the stunt show, one of the actors, I believe it was the actor that played Face, was standing by the exit, handing bullet casings to all the kids. Definitely something that you wouldn't be able to do nowadays. After the A-Team stunt show, it became the Miami Vice stunt show, which is one that I never got to see. And then after that, it became Waterworld, and it's been that ever since. Earlier, I mentioned how there used to be a lot more characters, and I remember back in the day when you would be leaving the park, Right here, there would be a whole bunch of characters lined up saying goodbye and telling you to have a great night. And same thing when you would get here in the morning, they would be all lined up greeting you. You would find Lucille Ball, Nutty Professor, Beetlejuice, Woody Woodpecker, just all kinds of characters out here. And now just not so much. Now, real quick, one thing that I forgot to talk about that was a huge change for the tram tour is back in the 80s, I'd say probably about halfway through the tour, the tram would stop and it would let you off in a place called the Prop Plaza Visitor's Village. 
You would get off the tram, you would go into a building, there was lots of stuff to look at, you might see a couple of presentations, and then you would come back outside and there was a bunch of different props for you to take pictures in front of. Of course, there was stores and food available, and then you would get back onto the tram and finish your tour. Here's a picture that I took of me standing on a trolley that at the time was being used for the TV show Parenthood, and this picture was taken in the old location of the Prop Plaza. So I actually have one brief and odd memory of the Prop Plaza from my trip there as a kid. I remember that when we were getting off the tram, the tour guide said, when you're inside the building, feel free to take as many pictures as you want, just don't take any off the wall. Now the reason why I told you that story is just in case there's any tour guides watching, I just want you to remember that the bad jokes that you tell today just might stick with a kid for the next 40 years or so. Another thing that I noticed and I just wanted to point out really quick is why in my opinion Universal Studios used to be so much cooler in the 80s and 90s. There's a ton of videos that you can find on YouTube of people's trips to Universal Studios in the 80s and 90s. And if you watch those videos, when they're on the back lot, you see all types of props and things are being filmed. There's picture cars out there. There was always a ton of stuff going on. But if you take the tram tour today, there's hardly ever anything going on on the back lot. That's because almost 90% of everything is filmed in a sound stage and using green screen. It's just not as cool. I'll give you all one more shot of the Cyberdyne building. And then over here to the right, you used to have a good view of Marvel Mania. And over here we have the classic Universal sign, but it used to have glass bricks underneath it, which I liked a lot better. And it was that way up until not too long ago, because I know I definitely remember taking a picture with my wife and son in front of it. As we head towards City Walk, right over here on the right side, this used to be where the Saddle Ranch restaurant was. And then before that, it was Tony Roma's. They tore down Saddle Ranch a few years ago, and now it's just kind of like a park. I assume they use it for like corporate events and things like that. Another thing that changed here in front of the park is this whole area used to be open. You used to just be able to walk up and take a picture in front of the Universal Globe, but now they have this whole area gated off, and if you want to get to the Globe, you actually have to go through a security checkpoint, which is just a total pain in the neck. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. I feel like there's still so much we didn't talk about. There's a lot of attractions I didn't get to. So I don't know, if you all like this video, maybe I'll do a part two later in the future. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.